Uh, yeah, so the title of the talk is Cryptic Crosswords 101. So what are cryptic crosswords? They are like a regular crossword in that um, it's a grid of words with clues for each one. Instead of the usual kind of direct clue to answer mapping, um, there's a bunch of like subtle wordplay, misdirection, and often humor. Uh, Wikipedia describes them as crossword puzzles uh, where each clue is a word puzzle in and of itself. Uh, so they originated in the UK in the 20s and now appear in a bunch of different British newspapers as well as newspapers in Canada, Australia and the US. I think there's one in the New York Times on a Sunday. So my disclaimer is that I'm definitely not an expert in solving them. Um, I'm probably not going to convince you that they're cool. Uh, spoiler, they're not. Um, but maybe I'll convince you that they are interesting and fun. So probably best is to look at some examples of clues and answers and work through them. Um, so a good high level rule is that what the clue appears to say when taken at sort of face value is usually not very helpful in getting to the actual answer, usually a bit of distraction and um, punctuation and the way it divides the clue up is usually not your friend. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at this one. Uh, so the clue is warning not to outstay welcome I encountered in African country and it's three words Four letters, two letters, two letters. Um, so we can work through sort of dividing this up. Um, so classic crypto crossword clue has like two components to it. So there's one part that gives you the, uh, the definition of the answer that you're looking for. So in that case, it's warning not to outstay welcome. That gets us to this answer, time to go. Um, and the rest of the clue gives us like this, this makeup of it. So we can break that up further. So I encountered translates to I met. In is like a modifier word. And that kind of tells us that we want to take that piece I encountered and move it into the next piece. So African country, where we get Togo. So if we sort of splice I met into Togo, that's what gets us the time to go. So we've got kind of two routes to the answer. And the good news about that is that when you get there, um, you're usually pretty sure you've got the right answer because like, you know, it's fairly sort of unambiguous at that point. Uh, <laughs> or something. <laughs> All right, so we'll look at some more. This one is also going to follow that same like two-part um, sort of strategy. So the word unusual in this case is one that kind of jumps out straight away, like once you start looking at it. And um, there are a bunch of words that signify maybe we're looking for an anagram, so some letters to rearrange in the clue. So in this case, unusual is that word. And it's telling us here that we want to rearrange the letters of E.G. Lana. And that gets us to a girl's name. So we rearrange E.G. Lana to get to Angela and girl's name to Angela. So that's the answer in this case. <laughs> Obvious, right? Um, so then there is some more, like oftentimes that two part rule is broken and you have to think slightly differently um, and just read things really literally basically. So in this case, the clue is H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O and the answer is gonna be five letters. So what are those letters? They are the letters H2O so we say that out loud, this chemical symbol, H2O, gets us to water. Also obvious, right? Um, so this is the last example I'll go through. Um, I like this one because it's like really self-referential. Um, so it sort of follows that original pattern that we talked about. Um, troublesome is another kind of indicator word that's telling us uh, this is going to be an anagram in here somewhere. There are a bunch of uh, words that can tell you that, like mixed up, broken, all sort of indicate that you want to take some letters and rearrange them. So in this case, we're going to rearrange the letters of a name is and come up with amnesia. And the self-referential part is that if you have amnesia, then a name is going to be troublesome because it's going to be hard to remember. <laughs> That's that one. Um, so yeah, just to wrap it up, um, definitely, I guess it seems like a little bit WTF when you start looking at these. <laughs> I, <laughs> I learn how to do them by um, sort of looking at the answers and working backwards to the clues. And what I like about it is that it seems like a really like, useless, untransferable skill, basically, which for some reason is um, appealing. It's just a crossword with its own rules and style, and you're not really achieving anything else. But I kind of really like the way they make you think. and. Um, yeah, just fun, basically. And along with some other like cognitive activities like Sudoku, there's like some research to suggest that maybe it can help with kind of um, improving your memory and sort of like delaying the onset of memory decline. Although, definitely take that with a pinch of salt. Um, yep, that's it. That's me.